So uh, welcome everyone to the uh, webinar on everything new in CodeGrid for the upcoming academic year. Uh, the reason I wanted to do this webinar is mainly because we added a lot of features uh, last year and also over the, over the summer as well. And it happens too often uh, that we get an email from a teacher or an instructor who wants to set something up uh, and uh, they don't know about new features that we've added. And uh, using those features could have already improved their course a lot. Um, so that's why I just want to give a quick update on everything that has been new for the past months um, to CodeGrade and also show you how you can use some of these new features. So for instance, the Git, uh, improved Git, the improved unit test, and some of the other auto test things. Um, and that's what I want to go over today. Uh, first of all, update you about all the new uh, resources that we have. Most of you will be familiar with them, uh, but I'll quickly cover them. Then give you an overview of all of the new features from the last year, or at least a subset of them. Um, some of them I'll quickly uh, explain how you can set them up. And after that, I'll more uh, elaborately explain some of the uh, important features for your courses. Great, so the new resources, and um, probably these are all familiar to you. Of course, we have the Help Center. This is something we created uh, last academic year, which has guides uh, and video tutorials on everything you can do inside CodeGrade. Um, so if you have a question, if something that's unclear to you, uh, then I recommend you to check this out uh, first. We have a really good search uh, function there, which will help you find your answers quickly. Um, next to that, something we've added uh, last month is a CodeGrid Basics series, which has uh, small YouTube videos on most of the basic things you can do within CodeGrid. And especially for the teachers who are just starting out and want to start doing auto grading for their Python or Java assignments, this is really a good place to get started. Because we have videos that cover everything you need to know um, to get your first auto-graded Java or Python or Jupyter Notebook assignment inside CodeGrade. Another video I recommend everyone to watch is the one about assignment states and deadlines, as this is something that is very important uh, to understand to master CodeGrade and can sometimes cause a little bit of confusion. So that's definitely worth your five minutes. Uh, this can be found in our help center as well on our quick start guide or on our YouTube channel. Um, next to that, uh, we have, of course, our blogs and guides. We've created a lot of them over the last year and will continue to do so. Uh, and these guides will cover more in-depth uh, use cases of CodeGrade, going from using SQL in CodeGrade to data science to really mastering linters and unit tests for Java and Python. Uh, there's a lot of resources there that you can find. Uh, and also the webinars like this one will be posted there. Finally, uh, and we've already covered it before the recording, uh, but of course we have the Discord community, uh, which is getting more busy, and I'm really happy about that, uh, which is the fastest way to get in touch with us and also with our teachers. Great. So another thing I'm really excited about is the webinars. Uh, since last year, we have uh, really been stepping up uh, the webinars. We've been doing them more frequently and more consistently, and uh, we see that they're getting really popular as well. Um, next to the webinars that I host, we also want to uh, try out some new things. Uh, and I'm ex excited that we're going to have our first teacher showcase uh, coming up in the next webinar, in which we'll talk about uh, web auto grading and setting up Jest and Selenium in CodeGrade. Uh, and then in November, so the, the, the webinar after that, we have an invited speaker from the uh, Italian University of Switzerland about a inventory of programming language misconceptions, which I think is a really, really interesting uh, research that he did. Uh, he's gonna talk about that and also uh, show you how you can use that in your own courses. Um, so with that, I hope we can bring some diversity in this and uh, keep this very interesting to all the teachers using CodeGrade. Um, now, to start with the new features, and we've added a lot, and this is just a subset of them. Um, some of them you may already use, some of them you may not even know that they're there. Um, I'll try to cover most of these in today's video. First thing uh, that we've added already uh, half a year ago is the custom descriptions. Um, now in Autotest, you can add a custom description to individual steps. 
and uh, that's specifically or especially important if uh, you're using more advanced auto grading and you want to explain to your students what you're doing in the step. Um, this feature is a little bit hidden on a step. What you have to do is you have to go to advanced options and there you can find the description templates. Uh, let me show you where you can find that. So if I go to auto test here, stop it. And if I open a auto test step, for instance, this one program step, I can find the advanced options right here. And here I can create my description template. I can use Markdown here and there's the substitutions available where you can also add things from your tests in the description template right here. Uh, and this works for all these steps in CodeGrade and for IO tests, you can even give, um, as the example shows right here, uh, sub-step uh, description templates. So this is something that can really improve the quality of your unit test or your auto tests a lot. Uh, and if you want to learn more about designing great auto tests with good feedback, we have a webinar that we've done at the end of last academic year on better automatic feedback, where we talk about feedback design and also auto test design inside CodeGrid. So that's a recommendation. Um, next to that is something we are also added uh, about half a year ago, and that is the new Python, uh, Python package of CodeGrade, uh, which makes it easier for you to use the API. And uh, we've done a whole webinar on this called Using the API. And uh, if you go to that blog post about that webinar, we also have some resources there where we have uh, scripts that we created in the webinar um, that you can download there and start using right away. It's very easy to use. You can just install it via pip and then you can import code grid like this and you can start using it very easily. Um, next to that, we also have the lock date now. And this is a feature request that we have from a lot of people. And I think this is something that a lot of you may you want to use in your course. Um, most of you want to use like a second deadline where the first deadline is soft and then you have a second harder deadline. And with the lock date, uh, which can act as a second deadline, you can now do that. Um, by default, so the first deadline, the normal deadline that we already had, is mandatory and it's hard by default. But if you uh, give the students the upload after deadline permission, then they can upload after the deadline as well. Then what you can do is you can add the lock date, which is then the second deadline. And uh, that is also hard by default. Um, but it is optional, of course. And if you set it up, then students can upload after the deadline, but only until the lock date. Thus, the lock date can act like a second deadline in that way. Um, and of course, if you in auto test then uh, automatically find out how many late days the students have submitted that, um, you can automatically deduct points. And with this, I think a lot of workflows uh, that were requested to us can work very seamlessly inside CodeGrid. Um, so you can find it just under the general tab, under the general settings, underneath the deadline. And if your uh, if CodeGrid for you is connected to your uh, learning management system, so for instance Canvas or Brightspace, um, then you set the lock date inside your learning management system, and it will automatically synchronize with CodeGrid. Great. Um, so this is something um, that has been recently added and I think has not gotten much attention, uh, but it's actually really useful is that we've added a new setting inside CodeGrade um, to uh, set up which file you want to load first. If your students have a big submission and you want to uh, always grade only one file of that or you want to make your workflow better, then uh, you can set up which file you want to load first in the code viewer. And that is also the file that will load first, of course. And um, this setting is a little bit hidden and you can find it if you go to, uh, let me go an updated version. Um, if you go to general, and then in general, if you scroll down under the advanced options right here, uh, you can set it up right here. Uh, if you want, you can also uh, use a glob uh, or like a wildcard to match uh, like all Python or a Python file or something like that. Um, actually really powerful, I think, uh, and it can make a lot of workflows even more efficient inside CodeGrid. Uh, right now, there is no Help Center article for this yet, uh, but that will be created next week. Uh, so if you're watching this as a video, then you can find more information about this in the Help Center. 
Um, so right now I wanted to go over a couple features a little bit more in depth. Uh, the first one is the copying of your previous code grade work. Um, next to all the new faces right here, there's also a lot of people uh, that have already been using CodeGrade for one or two years or even more so, uh, some of you. And uh, then of course, it's nice if you can copy your previous work to your new assignment and you don't have to create uh, your assignment from scratch again. Uh, we've added a couple of options for that. Uh, you can import a whole course. Uh, this right now only works for Brightspace and standalone users. Uh, for the other users, you can import whole assignments, uh, your auto test, your rubric, and your handy requirements. And of course, uh, this will decrease the preparation time. Um, you can import, uh, find these settings on the assignment management page. So if you're on the assignment management page, on the general tab, you can scroll all the way down and you can copy the assignment. If you do that, then of course, with the auto test, the hands requirements, the rubric, and all the settings will be copied from the previous assignment and will be in uh, this assignment as well. And of course, you can al also do this, but that was already an option a year ago as well. You can also import hand in requirements, a rubric or an auto test individually as well. So you can also create uh, assignments like that. Uh, so again, this one is under the general tab uh, and then auto test. You can also import a previous auto test um, configuration. Great. Um, maybe before I head on, I see there's a activity in the chat. Yuri, anything you want to know? Great. Well, in that case, let me continue. If you have any questions about these features, uh, feel free to ask them to Yuri. Great. So anonymous marking, this is something we've actually added in our summer uh, roadmap um, and has only been in code grade for, I think, a month now. And um, this allows you to grade anonymously inside code Also per very popular request. And um, it's actually a really easy setting. Again, under the general tab on your assignment management page, um, you can now find the anonymized grading option. And to show you where that is, so if you're on the assignment management page, you go to general, you can scroll down, and then under advanced options, again, right here, you can turn on anonymous grading. And if you do that, then all the students will show up anonymous. Uh, let me do that. Right here, you see what it looks like. So instead of names, you see anonymous with the number. This number is consistent between the different uh, assignments, of course. Um, one thing to note, this is only a cosmetic change. And of course, everyone that is using this is a uh, computer science a grader or teacher. We're probably pretty tech savvy. Um, there are, of course, always ways to figure out a name. Uh, so this is a cosmetic change in front end. Um, all the names will be uh, well uh, blurred like this. They will be uh, changed as anonymous. But of course, if you look into, uh, if you try to find them, you'll be able to find them. Uh, there's also a permission added for this. Uh, so users with the C anonymous names permission. Uh, can see names. However, this permission is not turned on by default for anyone. So even a teacher who has the most permissions uh, will not be able to see uh, students with anonymized names. Um, this also works together with groups. So if you're having a group assignment, then the group names will also be anonymized and also the names of the students within those groups will be anonymized. Great. Um, so now to the exciting part, uh, the new improved Git workflow. Um, we actually finished this two days ago and uh, we tested it thoroughly yesterday. Uh, and of course, throughout the whole development process. And uh, I must say, I'm pretty excited about it because uh, the previous Git workflow was a little bit hard for students to set up. They had to set it up for every assignment. And with the API and the improved or the new LTI version, it was already possible for teachers to automate this. Uh, but now with this uh, new Git workflow, it becomes so easy for students that you won't even want to automate it anymore. Um, so I'll first show you what it looks like uh, in pictures right here, and then I'll give you a quick demo uh, for GitHub. Um, so basically, if a student goes to CodeGrade with a Git, uh, submission option turned on. Uh, they get roughly the same screen. Uh, they get their two options, either GitHub or GitLab. And if they want, they can also still do the manual connection. 
uh, which is what you're used to. Um, but for now, if you click on GitHub or GitLab, then you'll be taken to the login screen of GitHub or GitLab. And um, right there, you can log in to your GitHub or GitLab account. You can authorize code grade by just pressing the authorize button and automatically you'll be taken back to code grade again. And in code grade, you'll find a whole list of all your uh, Git repositories and you can even create a Git, new Git repository. Um, so with this, all you have to do is log into your Git account, authorize code grade, and then after that, just press on the repository that you want to connect or create a new one. Um, the beautiful thing about this is, though, that a student only has to do this once. After that, their Git account is connected to their code grade account. And if they open a new assignment, um, they'll right away see this screen again and they can just select another repository or they can right away create a new repository and start working in there. Um, so that makes it very easy for a student to do, uh, way less error prone and uh, very, very nice. So in the end, automatically also they'll make a submission. Uh, so there's no more uh, having to do a manual commit or anything or a git push. Um, so just like you're used to, all new commi commits will then be automatically uploaded to CodeGrade after you set this up and it has been connected to the user's CodeGrade account so it can be reused for all the other assignments. Um, a user can disconnect GitHub or GitLab from CodeGrade by going to the GitHub or GitLab interface and then revoking access to CodeGrade. And if they do that, then they're disconnected again from CodeGrade and they can also log in with a different Git account. Um, so let me show you what this looks like. I've set up an assignment here in which I am a student. And as you can see, um, I'm on a testing environment. So we're getting new versions uh, during the demo, which is scary. Um, so uh, they can press on the connect Git option right here. Again, they can choose either GitHub or GitLab. Uh, for now, I'll show what GitHub looks like. And as you can see, they'll be taken to the GitHub screen right here. And if you're logged in, they don't even have to log in. They just have to press authorize. Um, so I can just press authorize because the CodeGrade student wants to authorize CodeGrade, authorize CodeGrade. And right away, we're taken back and we get an overview of our assignments. We can connect one of them or we can create a new assignment right away in the CodeGrade UI, UI and uh, that will be the assignment connected or the repo connected to this assignment. So let me now um, connect one of these and you can also click on them to navigate there in GitHub. Uh, let me connect assignment two. Um, yeah, all right. I did it before already. Uh, all right. Yes, all right. And then your assignment is connected. Um, but I think uh, something went wrong with the latest uh, deploy. Um, but if you do that, your assignment will be connected. Let me show the GitLab right here. Let me uh, connect the code grade assignment. This looks better. Yes. Hey. Uh, this message right here. Uh, I already connected the other one, uh, but didn't disconnect it. So that's why it said that. Uh, and I click here. And uh, right away, it will clone the assignment as code grade. And every new commit I now do will be added to this. Um, so that's beautiful, works really well. Uh, and of course, uh, I'm now on the testing environment. Uh, and currently, Thomas, who you know, is also still adding things. Um, so that's why uh, it didn't work as expected. So it will so, work perfectly. Good. Yes. Good question, uh, too, actually. So if you have self hosted GitLab, send us the URL and we'll add it. And then it just works the same. Yeah. Um, other question, does the old way still work? Yes. Um, if you go back, Devin, you can actually show it. You have to manually connect and then it's basically the old interface um, with the four steps. So you can still do that. Yes. Uh, and of course, if you have any API scripts that automatically do all of this, they'll just still work the same. Yes. Um, yeah, and you can all even download those API scripts uh, still from the uh, blog post I mentioned earlier. Great. Uh, so if there's no more questions about this, um, then I will continue to the next part. Um, I'm excited about this and you will all be able to use this from next week on. Uh, we'll be updating our uh, documentation and help center videos for the student side of this as well. 
So then you also have videos to share with your students, which they can uh, use to, to get an explanation on how they can set this up themselves. Great. Um, so we've also added a lot of auto test updates in the past months. Um, one of the big ones, of course, with this release, the unit test step upgrade, uh, but also some smaller ones, uh, or well, this is not a small one, this is a huge one, um, but has been there for a couple months already, which is auto test caching. Um, so for those who have not heard about this yet, um, we added auto test caching to auto test, which will cache um, the setup script automatically, uh, which of course means that there'll be faster feedback for students and it will be easier for you as a teacher to set up and test out your um, auto test. Uh, it, it's turned on by default, so all the new auto tests that you're creating are cached. Um, also, what is nice about this is that if you are using Autotest for data science or if you are installing new software in Autotest, things like that, that will all be cached. So no longer the students have to wait for everything to install as it will just use the cached uh, virtual machine for that. Um, so a quick overview of when you should use it and when you should not use it. Um, almost always you should use it. Um, but especially if you install new software or packages, um, or if you download or upload a large data set, or if you are doing other things, or if you are iteratively testing your auto test during, uh, before the assignment is open. Then there's a couple of times uh, or cases that you don't want to use caching, and that is mainly if you require real-time data. So if you always want the latest version of the software to install, of course, you cannot cache a installed version as that is not guaranteed to be the latest version. Also, uh, if, it, if you're changing data sets throughout the assignment, then you don't want to cache that, or if it depends on live data in any other way. Um, all of this information is also available in our help center. Ooh, um, so if you uh, would like to read through it again, you can find it there as well. Um, next to that, we've added in this release, the new uh, unit test step. And um, that will make creating unit tests inside CodeGrade uh, a little more user-friendly. Uh, before, of course, you had to fill in and install and compile using the CG wrapper scripts. So you would maybe use CG PyTest or CG JUnit5. Um, right now with the new unit test step, it works a little bit like with the uh, code quality step. We just have a drop down with all the unit test frameworks that we have installed by default. You can select your unit test framework. You type in the program or the test that you want to use. Um, you can add different settings or arguments if you want to, and it will work right away. And you don't have to install anything. And it is way less error prone. Um, so this is the configuration of a PyTest. You just select PyTest as the unit test framework. Um, then you can give up the file to test, which in this case is a fixture called test Stoku that I uploaded and then moved to the current directory. And there are some settings here that you can set up, uh, arguments that you can give. But if you don't want to do anything special, then all you need to do is this and it will work right away. Uh, for JUnit, it's also way easier. You select JUnit and the class of test and optionally you can give Java or JUnit arguments. Um, the only thing with JUnit is that you still need to use CG JUnit 5 to compile instead of Java C. Um, so as I show you here as well in the uh, run program step above our unit test, I'm using CG JUnit 5 compile right here. Um, but you don't need to install anything as that is all done automatically as well. Uh, let me show you what this looks like in real life. Um, so here I have two unit test categories. I should just show you, this is the one with JUnit and uh, this is the one with PyTest right here. And of course, um, I have these fixtures uploaded still just as fixtures. And then in the per student setup script, I move the fixtures to the current directory so I can access them easily. And I, but uh, a big change is that I don't have to install these scripts anymore in the global setup script here. Uh, what is nice is uh, if you go to the unit test step, you can just select one of the frameworks that we have. And each framework has its own arguments down here 
that are specific to that framework. So for instance, JRN5 has these arguments and will tell you that you need to use the JRN5 pytest has these arguments and uh, SEMgrep has other arguments again. Um, now, of course, we, as you know, uh, the people that have been using CodeBrain for a longer time, we uh, frequently add new unit test frameworks right here. Um, but of course, you can still use your custom unit test framework here as well. Uh, and if you want to create your own unit test framework, something new we've added as well is we have guides now, oh, set up automatic rating. We have guides now uh, that show you how you can create your own wrapper script for a unit test framework, and that will work with this step as well. Um, but of course, we are always here to help as well. So if you are using a unit test framework that is not in this drop on down list, feel free to let us know and uh, we'll try to add it as quickly as possible for you. Uh, any questions about this, Yuri? Um, no, I don't know if you pointed it out. I wasn't paying that much attention, but uh, it's backwards compatible as well. So yes. with your current, uh, current, uh, if you currently have a command like CGJ unit five, run your program with all your arguments, we automatically parse that, and it, you automatically will be selected with J unit five. Classes to test will be set, etc. Um, so that's quite nice. So you don't have to do any work there. You only you can remove the install from the global setup script if you want. You can also leave it there and won't do anything anymore. Yeah. Uh, and with caching, if it works, it uh, doesn't uh, slow down the testing. Anymore. No, that will always work. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good addition. Thanks. Um, great. So something you noticed here, maybe also in the auto test that I created here, uh, let me delete this, um, in the compile one here, is that for the compile step here, I gave it a weight of zero. And this is, of course, something that was impossible before, um, but a lot of people requested that they wanted to do this. Um, so we added it, and now you can have uh, steps with the weight of zero, um, which is very useful, of course, if you are compiling things, like in my example, uh, or a very frequent or common use case is to convert your Jupyter Notebook to a Python script or to run a Jupyter Notebook. These are often things that you don't want to uh, great students for, and then a weight of zero to make sure that it doesn't give the students any points for that. So that is possible now too, something good to uh, keep in mind when designing your auto test. Um, finally, uh, we've also added a package that is automatically installed in auto test, and this will probably not be very useful for a lot of you because this is a little bit of a more advanced use case. Uh, but in auto test, if you are having a Python script there, you can now use the uh, CGAT utils. And in that package, CGAT utils, which is automatically installed, you have the CG info, um, well, what is it, a class, I think, class um, or constant. Um, I was hoping someone would. Uh, speak out there uh, <laughs> it's a let's just call it a constant and um that as you may know that has all the information of the metadata about the auto test submission so that is also where you can find the deadline of the assignment the submitted app date of the current submission uh things like a student id things like that and with this you can more easily uh, create your own small scripts for auto test uh, for instance, the one I have right here, this one you can also copy and paste from our help center uh, where we uh, deduct points for late days. And uh, with a capture point step, you can run this and depending on how late the student uploaded it after the deadline, um, they will get a point deduction based on the calculation right here. Um, so good to know that that is there right now. Great. Um, so that was everything that I wanted to talk about today. It was a little bit shorter, uh, but I think it's good that everyone is up to date about all the new developments and uh, especially the exciting ones like Git and auto test caching and also the unit test step. Um, what is nice is that we don't not only have Sam, we also have an expansion of our development team. Uh, so we expect even more features and updates coming out this year. Um, and we have a newsletter for that, of course, so you'll stay up to date on everything and uh, there's way more to come. So um, still in the recording, does anyone have questions or have a feature request that you want to share 
during recording, let us know right now. Otherwise, we'll stop recording and we'll go to the Q&A session afterwards um, outside of the recording. Anything, Yuri? No, uh, it is a class, definitely. It's a class, yeah, of course. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Um, but that's that's, uh, that's all of it. <laughs> Testing the knowledge of the instructors here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, in that case, I'll stop the recording, and uh, I we can go on to the uh, other questions.